Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach, and this is my little internet show by Whitewater Stuff. And in today's episode, I'm going to try to answer the most frequently asked questions I get about the Oahe River. It's a Oahe season, people want to go, and I get a lot of phone calls and emails this time of year getting a, try to get advice. And I do my best to answer them, but this is also my busy season, so I can't quite answer them all. And I thought I'd make a video about it, a YouTube video and share with everybody uh, my thoughts. And, and I know a bit, but I'm not the expert. And so maybe some of you are, and you can answer the questions better. Please put it down in the comments. Say, tell, say what I did was, what I said was wrong, or give better advice, or give more thoughts, or have discussions. That's kind of the point of that. But I'm gonna do the best I can to answer the questions that I get pretty often. Before we get started, please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I love subscribers, and if you can, hit the like button. The more people that like this, the more people can see it. And people want to do the Oahe and they want information and I'm gonna do my best to provide, provide good information here. So with that, let's get started. The best time to go is March, April, and May. That's when there's water in the river. That's when the snow's melting. So typically that's when it's going. It's not always flowing in March, April, and May, but that's typically when it's flowing. In June, it's typically too low, although it can have water, but I would go March, April, and May. Well, I can't predict the weather, so I, I don't know. I don't know what the weather's gonna do. I mean, if I was Nostradamus, I could help you out here, but I'm not Nostradamus, so I, I can't tell you what the weather's gonna be. And the weather's gonna be either cold and rainy, or possibly snowy, maybe super windy and miserable, or hot and sunny. It's the Oahe, it's just so unpredictable. It can be, I mean, it can snow in June. We've seen everything. And so I, I don't even try to predict the weather. Even when the weather forecast says it's going to be sunny, I still plan on it raining. And even when it says it's going to rain, I assume it might be sunny. So all hats are off. If you need good weather to go, go somewhere else. Go do the Rogue. Go do this. Go do go do a summer river trip. Don't don't do the Hawaii. I don't usually check the snowpack that often. I feel like whatever the snowpack is at the end of March. I start making decisions, but I only check the snowpack to make conversation. Uh, it changes so much in the month of March due to like melting or more snow. It's almost no point in even checking till the end of March. And so at the end of March, I just Google Oahe River snowpack and there's a webpage that comes up and I take some guesses based on that. I do not predict the flows on the Oahe ever. I don't know what the flow is going to be when. It can be super low. It can be super high. The general time you want to go is March through May, uh, but I, I can't even guess what the flow is going to be. It changes so quickly that I, I just don't know. I've heard of people rafting as low as 300, and I've rafted it down to, I think, 800 personally, but I know people have done, have done commercial trips on a 300, and you can run it pretty high. I mean, I've heard of people doing it at the high eight, nine, ten thousand flows. I don't know what that means. I've never done it that high, but you can do it at a wide variety of flows depending on your tolerance for pain, right? The average person wants to have fun, like a thousand plus is fun. But once you get below there, it can be tedious. And so it depends how willing you are to get out and drag your boat and, and what's fun to you. I mean, 3,000 is an awesome flow, but it just isn't going to be 3,000 and sunny when you want it to be 3,000 and sunny. It can be done down to 300, maybe lower in Ducky. So, you know, if you're going to do a Ducky self-support trip, which is awesome, you should, I could probably do it down to 200. Like, that's that's a great trip. Uh, but in rafts, I would, personally, most people, I probably would go lower than 800. Although you can. I just think 800 is like a number where it starts getting pretty tough for the average boater below that. But, again, I, I don't know your boating skills and your tolerance for pain, so you have to make up your own decision there. Sure, I, I mean, I don't know what it means to be a class four boater. I, I don't know your personal boating skills, but sure, a class four boater could probably do it at 600. Uh, just because you survived a class four rapid doesn't make you a class four boater. Um, so, uh, and, and not all class four is the same, uh, but to do it at low water, you need to be able to Rig your boat lights, don't bring a lot of weight, jump out and push, that kind of thing. We typically take out a Birch Creek. Uh, I like that takeout. Uh, I don't like to go down to Leslie Gulch because of the reservoir tow. Uh, it's, it's unpredictable. 
And so we just deal with the four wheel drive road at Birch Creek. And I feel like that's a nice pace for the trip to do the, the trip from Rome to Birch Creek. I have, I have no idea. Maybe, possibly. It depends on that road. That road isn't too bad when it's dry. Uh, you do need some ground clearance, but when it's raining, it's, it's a whole different game. So again, the weather can say 100 degrees when you leave and it can still rain to take out. And so it depends on your willingness to gamble with your vehicle. Um, I think if you have a good truck with good tires and clearance and four wheel drive and maybe have some chains with you, you can pretty much always get out. Not 100%, but pretty much always. But if you're going to gamble with a Subaru or a two-wheel drive truck, I, I don't. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't, but it's not a bad idea, I guess, if you really want to go. Yeah, if you have, a, again, a good truck, good tires, four-wheel drive, clearance, I think you'll probably make it out, even if it gets a little muddy in there. So I think the biggest thing with the Oahe is, is if there's good weather and there's good flows, there's going to be a ton of people there. And when there's a ton of people there, camping is an issue. There's a definitely like a camping issue in that canyon when it's crowded. So you're not going to get good weather and good flows and good camps. Something has to give. So if the water's terrible, go then and maybe you'll have great weather and you'll have uh, good camps. Or maybe the, the weather's terrible, but the flow's good. That's a good time to go because there's fewer people. So something's going to give. You're just not going to get that trip where you have perfect weather and perfect flows. I mean, half of Boise is going to drive to the Oahe if the weather's good and there's good water. So uh, I think I think you have to give something and just go when it's bad. I mean, it's a great time to go because it's very – you have the place to yourself. It's really cool. And just bring some tarps, bring some firewood, and enjoy the cold weather. Um, or again, deal with low water, deal with just dragging your boat down. But it's, this is a river where it's not, everything's not going to line up. If that's what you want, you know, that's what permitted rivers in the summer are for, is for that kind of, that kind of trip. Well, the BLM put out a map. If you just Google like BLM Oahe map, there's a great map they put out. You can print it out yourself. I laminate ours, so it's nice to have a laminated one. And I also created a web page about this one of my guides wrote with more just general information about the trip. And I'll put a link down down there below uh, to that page. Uh, there's like a comment section I'll, down below. You can just read it and see what he says. But um, there's a few good resources. There's no there's no guidebook other than the one the BLM uh, made. So you'll want to want to try to find that one. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If uh, again, this is really important to me. This is the best answers I have. So if those of you out there have better answers, put them in the comments. I would love the comments to be a resource for the Oahe River for, for those, those that want to do it. And if and if you weren't happy with my questions, go look to the comments because, or sorry, if you weren't happy with my answers, go look in the questions because maybe the answers you want are there. But I think it's just super important to realize this is not a predictable place. I Nobody can tell you what the flow and the weather is going to be like before you get there. So so go in knowing that and also go in knowing that like the, the boat wrap can get crowded, campsites, campsites can get crowded. And just be a nice person. Be happy. Help others out. Be a good member of the community. Wave at people. Um, if it's crowded, just do, you know, do your best to make a happy experience for everyone. And I hope to see you out there uh, when I get to go out there this spring. And um, yeah, that's it. As always, smash the subscribe button. Smash the like button. Leave comments. Uh, people have been sending me super nice emails lately. I love, I love reading those. Thank you for all the nice emails. And that's it for now. See you in the next episode. Thanks.